Will Manchester United and will Ralph Ragnick be making any signings in the January transfer window? What I'm going to do in this video is run through another player who has been linked heavily with Manchester United over the last couple of weeks. And that's Barcelona midfielder Frankie de Jong. A player who all of us would have loved to have signed from Ajax before he went to Barcelona. A player who has joined Barcelona and been part of this mad couple of years where their club is basically falling apart at the seams. What are the reports linking De Jong to Manchester United? Where are they coming from? Are they reliable? How could he fit into Manchester United? How is De Jong compared to someone like Haidara? Which one of those would be a better signing for Ralph Randick in this system that he's building? I'm going to cover all of it in this video for you. So sit back, enjoy yourself for 10 minutes. Please, if you can sit, if you enjoy the video by the end of it, consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV. But let's get into the full story here, discussing De Jong to Manchester United and whether it can happen. And there's only one place we can start, really, and that's here. Last night, Barcelona were knocked out of the Champions League after losing 3-0 to Bayern Munich. They are playing in the Europa League. Thursday night to calling for Barcelona. The first time, I believe, since 2000, since they've been knocked out of the Champions League at the group stage. They are a club in disarray since Messi left, since, everything, since the Super League collapsed, since everything that's gone on. They've now got Xavi in, but they're far, far, far away from being the Barcelona of old. That Barcelona team that stopped us winning three Champions Leagues in a row. Bastards. Anyway, so De Jong, <clears throat> because they've crashed out of the Champions League, it gives more credence to the fact that they are going to cash in on some players in the January transfer window. Because if we go over to here to other reports, now Xavi has denied, has said that look, he, he's untransferable, but this line here is very, very important. As things stand, Barcelona cannot make any signings during the transfer window in January unless they sell players. You scroll down here, you see what Xavi has had to say about De Jong. He said he is untransferable. Very important and capable to make the difference. Xavi does not want to lose one of his best midfielders. But if Barcelona are going to sign any players, they need to get rid of some players first. Because the finances at Barcelona, I'm not sure if you've seen, they are fucked. They really are screwed. Uh, years and years and years of overinvestment, spending like 150 million on Coutinho and all the other players they signed. Dembele was 100 million as well, wasn't he? Uh, bringing in extra loans, X, Y, Z. I don't care about their, but their situation. I just know financially they're not very stable. So let's take a look at where the actual reports are coming from. And it really kick-started recently with a report from El Nacional, a local Catalon Catalonian uh, newspaper report. And what we did over on the People's Person, I uh, say we, Red Billy did, over on the People's Person was went through this article in depth. So let's run through this together. Uh, the report said Manchester United have rejected the chance to sign Coutinho. Oh, thank you. Uh, but have opened discussions to secure the services of Frankie de Jong. United are reported to have met with Barcelona delegation in Manchester recently, where an offer of 55 million euros was mooted for the 24-year-old. But Barcelona want more. Of course they want more. He's worth way more than that. Uh, and they and mentioned down here, they talk about Edinson Cavani. Now, I'm not sure if you saw those links, but Cavani's been linked with a move to Barcelona in January. Maybe this could be part of it, right? Uh, the article goes on to discuss the fee Barca paid for him, 86 million euros. So they'll probably want that back, wouldn't they? Um, but Barca will not negotiate any operation for the footballer that is below 70 million euros. At this point, um, what would you say is a fair price for someone like Frankie de Jong? Who, as Red Billy rightly described here, look at that, Rolls-Royce signing for the position. De Jong could, what? Well, jeez, De Jong would take United's midfield onto a completely and utterly different level. But how much do you think he's worth? Right, so that's where the story has really started to develop from recently. As I said, El Nacional, a local Catalonian newspaper. If we go over to what's happening today. We can see here more stories saying Ter Stegen is placed on the transfer market by Barca. Serginho Dest and Frankie de Jong will also be placed on the market. And they go on to say that 80 million euros is the price tag for Frankie de Jong. And this is coming from Gerard Romero. Now, who is Gerard Romero, Sam? Is he reliable? I can hear your questions, even though I can't actually hear anything. Uh, he is a reporter. I don't actually know who he writes for or works for. But if you go over here and you look at Barca's, this is from Barca's Reddit page, not Barca's official one, uh, but, you know, the fan one, you look at the transfer reliability guide. They loved it. Tier 1's tier 5. Tier 1's obviously the best. Tier 3, that's exactly where Gerard Romero sits, right in the middle. He's basically Bet Midler of the Barcelona transfer game. So while you can't take his word as gospel, you can't just completely dismiss it as a load of old guff. Now, Frankie de Jong would be just an incredible, I mean, that's an incredible signing. That's, that's, a, that's a, basically a marquee signing in midfield. Could that happen in the January transfer window? Uh, Bruno Fernandes was signed in January. So our recent expectations are we can sign great players in January. 
Uh, of course, Bruno was, uh, we were going after Bruno in the summer. We didn't go up, we didn't eventually get the deal done. So maybe it's a little bit different to hear. But Frankie de Jong, I think the fact that Barcelona have crashed out of the Champions League gives this more legs. The fact that they need money to make January signings gives this more legs. So we're gonna, I'm going to keep following this story as it continues. But look, those are the reports, right? But is he the right midfielder for Manchester United? This is what we're going to have a quick discussion about now. Because if we're looking at a full story, we can't just look at the actual reports. We've got to say, look, how could he fit into this Manchester United team? We go over to Football Ref here and we look at his statistics per 90 across the course of the season. Frankie de Jong. And what we're going to do here is compare him to two midfielders, Amadou Haidara and Fred. And I'll explain why when I've done it. So if you look here, man, look, look how much he contributes to the attacking side of the game. Assists per 90. Look at that. He's in a nearly top 20%. Expected assists, 95%. So the, the, the strikers are missing the chances that he's creating. Um, the passes attempted, top 10%, top 10%, top 5%. Top, he's just amazing everywhere. But we scroll down here and we see these. And then do we have red flags? Well, we have red lines. He doesn't really press too often. He doesn't make that many tackles. He doesn't make that many interceptions, blocks or clearances. Does that mean that Frankie de Jong is the wrong sort of player for Manchester United? Surely that means that he wouldn't fit inside this system that Ralph Randick is building. So what I'll do now is let's quickly compare him to Amadou Haidara. And we'll see a complete opposite here. Because you can see Haidara, he's going towards the lower percentiles for his contributions to the goal scoring side of things passing wise you know he's got a decent progressive pass in there but by comparison here look look at that green everywhere pure it's like an evergreen tree forest look at that compared to here but we go down to Haidara and we look at his pressures his tackles his interceptions his blocks his clearances that's where he shines a very very different player to De Jong Haidara is the man that while he can bring some progressive pass into the game, his real focus is on being another Fred, really. Pressing, tackling, intercepting, blocking. He would add a lot. It's not to say, I would say he's got characteristics similar to Fred, but also is a bit better. He's got more progressive pass into his game. So he's not a Fred V2. But if you're looking at Frankie de Jong and what he's good at, wow. It's all about creating. It's all about passing. It's all about carrying the ball and dribbling. That's what Frankie de Jong is at. He's good at. And the, this is the thing here, right? In, in midfield, it's, in, in anywhere, right? It's all about balance. Balance is the buzzword, right? So if we're looking here at what Frankie de Jong is good at, and he's great with the ball at his feet, and we look at Fred, and we can see, you can see a partnership there. Fred is like Haidara. If we were to compare Haidara's stats down there in terms of his pressing, his tackling, his intercepting, his blocks, and his clearances, that's where Fred's good at as well, apart from clearances. Blocks, top 1% for blocks. My God, ridiculous. But Fred, again, if you were to compare Frankie de Jong inside these numbers here to there, look how much better Frankie de Jong is with the ball at his feet than Fred. I don't, I mean, I don't need to tell you that. You would have known that anyway. But if we're looking there, you're looking at a potential partnership between Fred and de Jong that could really, really complement each other. This is a, just a formation that I've drawn up here. We've got De Gea in goal. I've got Delot and Tellez as a fullback, so it doesn't really matter that much. Maguire and Varane, but look, that midfield two there, you've got Fred and you've got De Jong. Now, that's a combination that could prove so fruitful to Manchester United. You've got Fred here. Now, we know what Fred is going to do. Fred is going to drift over here. Fred is going to be that man who disrupts the play. That's what Fred is. He is a disruptor. I call him, I've always called him the Wasp. That's what he is. He's a really good Wasp, as long as he's a friendly Wasp. But... He's someone who's constantly buzzing around, constantly disrupting. That's his style of play. And by doing that, it would allow De Jong to drop deep and receive. And that's something that De Jong would certainly do over Haidara. He'd be able to receive the ball much deeper in these sorts of zones and carry it forward. And that's something we haven't had for a long time. If Haidara was to come in instead of De Jong, and as I said, we can look at these stats here, he would be someone who, if we're being honest, his progressive passes are good. His pass completion is good, but he's not really a ball carrier. We need a bit of a ball carrier, don't we? And that's where, if we look at Frankie de Jong, look at that, top 5% in terms of ball carries, in terms of dribbling, in terms of bringing the ball out from the back. Frankie de Jong would offer so much more than Haidara. Two very, very different players. Both 
with a set of uh, attributes that would clearly improve Manchester United. And I'll tell you who else would be happy if he came in. I mean, it kind of goes without saying. If he was to come in, Donny van der Beek would be rubbing his thighs. And I know the two, another two guys who would be rubbing their thighs. Hmm? Yeah? Come on. Get him in in the summer. No, we'll get, we, we get De Jong in in winter. We'll get Ten Hag in the summer. And then we'll get van der Sar the year after. Easy. And then we'll start playing three little birds before, before the game. No, I'm joking. We'll play Stone Roses. But look, you can clearly understand by looking at these stats. As I said, this is a full story look. You can see where his strengths are. His strengths are not really particularly in the pressing game. And that's where I'm saying, hmm, question marks. Would that work inside a Rangnick system? Haidara obviously would have that pressing, but he wouldn't be bringing the ball out as much. But then I say, look, do we really need to sign a midfielder whose main focus is pressing? Or do we need to allow Fred to hold that position, be that disruptor, be that presser, and have somebody who has the ability to carry the ball from deep? And could that person be Frankie de Jong? Absolutely, that person could be Frankie de Jong. And it will be an amazing signing if Manchester United were to make it happen. But that's a full story look at everything so far. As I said, the fact that Barcelona have gone crashing out of the Champions League, that gives Manchester United more of an opportunity to test the waters here with, our, with Barcelona and with Frank de Jong. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you like, what, if you were to choose, right, de Jong or Haidara, one of those two signings, which one would you rather have? I'm going to be doing plenty of these videos because we've got the January, January transfer window coming up, I don't know, in a few weeks' time. I like doing these full story looks at the reports, where they've come from, the reliability. And also, it's fun to look at the stats and compare players and actually have a discussion about who might be the best signing for United. Now, you let me know everything in the comments below. As I said, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like on it and subscribing to United People's TV if you're new. Let me know what you think about Frankie de Jong.